Prior, look. A chest. God be praised. We found the lost relics. Let's retrieve them with caution. Apart the bones, I don't see any danger. Hello fellow crafters, this is Lan Vader. Today we're going to be crafting some bone piles. And we're going to use this little scally for scale reference. So first we need some kind of thin board. And I'm going to tape it to the workspace. Just to prevent it from warping too much. Okay, first thing we're going to do is the rib cages of the skellies that are going to be set on top of the bone pile. So for that we need paper clips that we're going to unfold. We're going to use them to make the rib cage. So we're going to be using these small electrician pliers. If you don't have some, buy some, because they are basically very useful to hold tiny and precise stuff. So we're going to twist the paper clip all around the pliers. Now at this stage, you're going to stop and make a small mark at the middle right there. Because the ribs are pulled up under the rib cage. So we're going to simulate that effect. We're going to bend the paper clip inwards. This way. Then we're going to keep up folding the paper clip all around the pliers until the rib cage is done. There you go. Now let's go for the spine. So for the spine I'm gonna be using something more flexible. I'm actually using some copper wire. That's for one reason. I want to score the wire because what I want to do is imitate some vertebrae. So to score the copper wire I'm really only going to use the tip of these cutting pliers. Because if I apply too much strength, it will break the copper wire. So I'm scoring it. And as you can see, it looks a little bit like a spine. So you can cut several spines to the right length. Okay, so I'm going to use some acrylic filler to make the bases of my uh, bone piles. I'm going to use some water to water it down and flatten it a little bit because I actually want miniatures to be able to stand up on these piles so I don't want them to be too high. So first for the bones I wanted to use some toothpicks but the scale was a bit off so I tried to cut them but it was way too tedious so I found another way. Yeah that's right we're going to be using some pasta. So obviously you have to find some spaghettis that are about the same thickness of the thickest bones of the skeleton. But that is going to be very easy. The only thing you have to do is cut them with your own hands. Just make sure you don't cut them too long. For a reminder, the longer bone of the human body is the femur. And you can compare it to the one of the miniature. But you're going to obtain a good amount of bones very fast with this technique. You also need to assemble the spines to the rib cages using some strong glue. So now I'll cut some very small pieces of toothpick, very thin, to make the sternum or breastbone, if you prefer. Now doing the rib cages is definitely going to be the most annoying part of the craft. Because it will have to be precise and the glue tends to stick to the different tools. A bit of water on the acrylic filler. And putting on the rib cages first. Then you can sprinkle on the bones and rearrange them as you see fit. So 
So as you can see, I'm also going to cut the paper clips with the cutting pliers. I'm just making sure to cut them inside the recipients to make sure the bits aren't going to fly everywhere into the room. And I'm going to sprinkle it on top of the bone pile. This is going to give a little variation to the size of the bones. It'll give the impression these are thinner bones or ribs. The skulls are the only thing I'm not gonna craft myself. I'm gonna use these uh, green stuff bones I bought. They were very expensive and I'm gonna use them. Of course, you could actually sculpt your own skulls using Sculpey, but I didn't have some. I tried with some Fimu paste, but it wasn't precise enough and I didn't want to use my green stuff. As you can see, I'm cutting a little more rib cages and smaller bones, because I felt there weren't enough of them. Sprinkle them. Nice. Then we're going to use some mud podge to harden the craft. I'm going to base it with quite a lot of water, just to make sure I don't lose any detail. And I'm going to drop the mix on the craft. So it will seal the piece without really moving it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I'm gonna use some raw sand just to simulate some broken vertebrae scattered here and there. Yet a little bit more mud budge. I'm gonna dry it with the hair dryer to gain time. Then I'm cutting everything loose with the X-Acto knife. So even if I use some tape to stick the base onto the workspace, there was still some warping taking place. So what I did is use some nails to pin down the craft onto the workspace. But even then, there was a little warping. So what I did was actually bevel the edges just to make sure to have a piece that would actually stand quite flat onto the tabletop. So we're gonna prime it with ivory. And I'm gonna use my airbrush. Now you can do it without airbrush, but I've got one and I want something that's gonna do a regular, very regular coating something very neat and I want to make sure I don't lose any details so I'm gonna use the airbrush I'm not here to make some advertising I'm not paid for it but if you guys want to buy the same air airbrush this one is called the Neo from Iwata and it's coupled with a compressor uh, called Ninja Jet also from Iwata uh, the airbrush isn't that uh, expensive uh, the compressor though is a little pricey but it's very small but it looks really good to paint some miniatures, uh, some scenery uh, for tabletop gaming. So I'm gonna prime all the pieces, make sure there's uh, some ivory everywhere. So I'm gonna turn the pieces to make sure I hit every part in every recess. I don't wanna waste any paint, so I'm gonna put the excess back into the bowl. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna do a wash using this uh, medium flesh tone. So I'm gonna mix in quite a lot of water. I don't want it to be too thick because I really want the paint to go into the recesses. And I'm gonna make a wash on top of all the pieces.
Then I'm going to make a dark brown wash, but even more diluted. I really want this uh, wash only to go into the recesses. So as you can see, I do this to enhance the contrast. And finally, we're going to end up with a ivory dry brush, just to make sure that the different bones will actually stand out from the pile. So there you go, nice piece of scattered terrain. Pretty easy to do as well. The only really tricky part is the rib cages. So these can definitely be added on your tabletop if you're playing in crypts or, uh, you know, into some cavern of some beasts. But you can also use them for game mechanics. I mean, if players want to play stealthily, they'll definitely have to avoid these zones, otherwise they'll have a disadvantage on stealth. Also, if a character actually falls on a bone pile from a certain height, he actually gets some additional damage because of the bones. So, if you like this tutorial, uh, please like, share, or subscribe. And don't forget to click on the little bell icon to get some notifications. This is Lonvator signing off.